Good morning, Good morning. church. Good morning. Welcome to another service of the Movement Church. Wherever you're watching this from, we want to say thank you for joining us. If this is your first time joining us, welcome to the family. Take a moment to share and let us know where you're tuning in from. Whether you're from Sydney, Dubbo, maybe you're from outside of Australia. Let us know and leave a comment in the chat box below. And if you haven't already, connect with us on social media. You can find us on Facebook at The Movement Church and Instagram at themovement.church. And while you're at it, don't forget to, to share this message to your family and friends. Let's spread the word of God together. And you never know whose lives you might change by one simple click of a button. Now who's excited for the word of God today? Get your notes ready. Let's open our minds and prepare our hearts as we go into God's message this morning. But before we do, here's the movement news. By now you'd be aware that the Australian census is being taken on August 10. I know you're gonna play your part and fill it out. And as a church leader, I encourage everybody who is part of a Pentecostal church to look at question 23 and where the word other appears under church affiliation, I'd strongly encourage you to write the word Pentecostal. Not the name of your local church, Pentecostal. We are a significant part of this wonderful society called Australia. And I'd encourage you now to write that name so that we can all be recognized for who we are and what we do. Have 
heaven sounds like We praise you, we praise you This is what living looks like This is what freedom feels like This is what heaven sounds like We praise you Come on, if you believe it, let's sing this louder
What a great worship. Come on, somebody. Can you please praise God that He is so good and so faithful in our life? Amen. Hey, church, today I just want to welcome everybody. Welcome to Movement Online, Movement at Home, wherever you're watching from, whether you're in Sydney, in Melbourne, you know, in overseas, in Indonesia, Philippines, wherever you're tuning from, I just want to say welcome to the Movement family today. And I believe today you will be blessed. Hey, come on, somebody. How many of you are expecting God to move and God to speak into your life today? Let's come to the throne of God with faith and expectancy this morning all right before we go further uh, this is the exciting part I want to share something quickly about giving who is excited to give all right we want to talk about generosity that leads to influence and honor Psalm 112 verse 9 says this they share freely and give generously to those in need their good deeds will be remembered forever they have influence and honor church how do you know that your generosity uh, expands your influence that our influence comes not from what we get in life but our influence comes from what we give away in life and the more we give away the more enlarged the more expanded our life will be and amen that's what the bible also says in proverbs 11:24 that the world of the generous gets what gets larger and larger and the world of the stingy gets smaller and smaller you know when the Bible talks about generosity isn't it interesting that the motivation of generosity is almost always not about the person receiving the blessing but it's mostly about the person giving the blessing in other words we want to be generous for what it does for us when we give not when we receive you know all throughout the scriptures God encouraged us to live our lives in such a way that it impacts other people it impacts the lives of other people and God wants us to live large lives how many of you want to live a large life you know if you really think about it let me ask you this question what will a large life look to you I believe in this context, it means not just living our lives for ourselves, not just living for our own needs, but also for other people as well. Maybe some of you may think, if I can just make enough money for me and my family and we can live a pretty good life, you know, my friend, that is not what God has in mind for His children, for you and me. That is usually the mentality that actually says, I will help others, I will be a blessing once I have, once I have sorted out my life, once my affairs are in order then I will start to be generous you know you know why that rarely happens because why the Bible also says that the world of the stingy gets smaller and smaller God never called his children to you and me to just live a life that is barely enough just to live a life that's barely getting by and to just pay the bills but hey God wants you and me to live a large life Generosity is not something that comes when we accumulate after we accumulate our wealth. It is something that we live out right from wherever we are today. It is something that we start today, no matter where we are in life right now. It is not something that just shows up in our life, but it is a lifestyle that we cultivate daily. It is a lifestyle that we cultivate intentionally over and over. So today, as we get ready to give, I want to challenge you and ask you these questions. How can you be generous today and impact someone's life, right? How can you be generous today and impact someone's life? And I want to tell you, watch how God actually expands your life and expands your influence and enlarge your life. Any amen? Let's pray together. Father, we thank you, Lord God, that you are a generous God. Father, we want to live like our Father. Father, we want to cultivate a lifestyle of generosity. We pray that God, you will use us, Lord God, in this season to be a blessing throughout this season of need. And we pray for all the seeds that are being sown, that they will multiply forth in people's lives, Lord, that will change life, that, that will expand the kingdom of God. And we thank you, Lord God, for your faithful love and your generosity that never failed in our life. In Jesus. Jesus name you're ready to give and everybody says amen and amen and amen in the movement church we want to make giving as easy as possible for everybody so right now on your screen you will be able to see some giving options obviously the easiest way is to just give online there's a QR code that you can scan or you can just go to the website that will take you straight away to online giving all right, now who is ready for the word of God I'm excited for the word of God today hey we have a surprise today that We've got a guest speaker today. Uh, okay, today we have got uh, someone who's gonna speak to us, but 
this man of God is not just another guest speaker, but he is a family of the Movement Church, you know, it, uh, imported straight from Indonesia, a returning resident. In fact, uh, he just literally arrived in Sydney a few weeks ago, and just this week he was finally finishing his 14 days quarantine in the hotel and finally getting reunited with his family again in Sydney. How good is that? You know, in Indonesia, he's pastoring a beautiful, growing, powerful church, but at the same time, Here's the interesting thing. He is also a successful businessman that God has been using to, to, to be a blessing and such a testimony in his life. Over the years, he has been a constant voice of encouragement and also has been a spiritual figure in our lives personally and for the church as well, right? We love him dearly and we honor him so much for what he does and for who he is in our lives. So today, I wanna encourage you. Let's, I want everyone to honor the man of God today you know, let's prepare our hearts, let's tune our hearts, tune our ears and get ready to hear from the man of God, Pastor Amin Lee. Let's welcome together Pastor Amin Lee. Praise the Lord. Uh, thank you, the Movement Church. And thank you, Pastor Marcel and Pastor Jessica and Pastor Roy and the others leaders. And I'm so happy to be here with you all, although I cannot see you like in the church but I know that our God is a great God. And today, we like to sh I would like to share the words of God. And before that, let us pray. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for this beautiful morning. May your Holy Spirit move and touch each every one of us, that we be, we be rejoice in you and your word will be strengthened us. In the precious name of Jesus, we surrender the whole uh, city of Sydney in your hand. We know that we are going to be a winner and this coffee is going to be over. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. And before I start to read the words of God, I want to tell you a story about the legendary Wimbledon prayer who was dying of AIDS, which he got due to infected blood. He received during a heart surgery in 1983. And he was first a black tennis player, and he was the Wimbledon champion. And during his illness, he received letters from his fan, one of which conveyed, he said that, why did God have to select you for such a bad disease? So his name is Arthur Essie. And Arthur Lepry, he said, boys, there are 50 million children start playing tennis. 5 million learned to play tennis. 500,000 learned professional tennis. And 50,000 came to the circuit. And 5,000 reaches a grand slam. 50 reaches of Wimbledon, and 4 reaches the semi-finals of Wimbledon, and 2 reaches the final. And when I was holding the cup of my hand, I never asked God, why me? So when he, were, when he was the champion of Wimbledon, I said, that, why did I didn't ask God, why me? So now that I'm in pain and in sick, how can I ask God, why me? Wow. This is a real story, isn't it? There are so many why me in our life. In fact, what he said is, happiness keep you sweet and try and keep you strong and sorrow keeps you human and failure keep you humble and success keep you growing but only faith keep you going. Today, you and me have a choice. We must have faith. Our faith is either in Christ or in the world. And the Bible says very clearly, it is impossible to please God without faith. It's in Hebrews 11, 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please Him, for he that come to God must believe that He is, and there is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. <coughs> like it or not, if we don't have faith in God, meaning that we are going to have faith in our own understanding. The Bible says that if we are believing our own understanding, if we lean only on our own understanding, we are going to be a failure. We can see so many people in this pandemic, they just couldn't understand. I got a good job. I'm a director of the company. I am a CEO of the public listing company. Because of this COVID happened, what happened? I was you know, resign and I have to, uh, they have to 
cut out my 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 salary, and I have to be stay at home, and I have to out of job. There are so many pressure, and there are so many why that this kind of thing happen in my life. And the Bible promises that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and the revelation in the knowledge of Him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of His calling and what the riches of the glory of His inheritance in the saints. So, meaning that Jesus already let us know that He is going to open up the eyes of your understanding. Another Bible say that uh, in the Chinese Bible say that the eyes in our heart. That means our heart has an eyes to know what is the will of God. To know that God call us, we have hope in Him. To know that we we are going to have all His blessing. I know this COVID 1 9 is really hit the whole world. Not only Australia, but the whole world. I just want to tell you a story about what happened in my life. There was last year. In March, and my 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 wife called me and crying, and she told me that her brother passed away. So this is my brother-in-law, 56 years old, passed away because of COVID. And we were there, and we were so upset. And I, you know, I went back home and went to the hospital, and we we saw the family, and everybody was crying, and then we can see the casket was very bad, and then you know. The funeral must be at the same day, and then uh, I have to isolate myself at home and my wife because we met uh, his wife. So he, the the wife also positive, and the two kids also positive. So we have, we must isolate ourselves. After we isolated about twelve day or thirteen day, and I got another phone call from my daughter Eunice, and she told me that Chris father. Pass away because of COVID. It's another nightmare to me, and immediately I went uh, to the hospital to arrange all the necessary paperwork. And guess what? There is no casket. And we call the COVID center. They say that we are run of casket because people dying are much faster than we can find a casket in the market. And we we are so upset. We find a casket and everything. We have to do it ourselves. So normally it's government that is in charge, but we have no choice, and we have to do it ourselves. And then after all of this, and that COVID center ladies call me the next day, and she said that we apologize that we don't have a casket ambulance for you. I said no problem. I said I said what happened? He said that we don't run of casket. I told her I said that I'm a furnace of factory. I can help you. So he said all right. So after a week or so, three ladies, oh three. Ladies and gentlemen came to my factory, and when he when we talk, and they all look at the factory and they beg us to offer them to help them to produce a casket, that was in the month of April 2020. So what happened? And then since that day, and she said that I need 50 a day. I said 50 casket a day. So many? He said. She said yes. So I said I try. So we try ten and twenty, and at last that we are we are achieving fifty casket a day. My dear brother and sister, if you are complaining about your life, you will never understand what happened in Indonesia. Fifty people die a day is a big is a big number, but yet, since last year, the factory produced a casket and opened up a new line, and we have been producing. Twenty-two thousand casket from last year, April or May, until today. In the midst of this, and I can see how the COVID came into the country and killed so many people. And for us as a human being, we thought that you know we can use our money, our talented, to live our life. But today, all of us, we realize that we are very limited. We must allow God to be our God in our life. Please do not allow your money, your fame, your intelligence, your achievement, your deposit, your bank account to be your God. Please, this remind us. Let us have faith in Jesus. If we have faith in Him, we know that He is going to open up the door. 
And you know, as a pastor, I know that Pastor Marcel and Pastor Jessica is the same. We are not just, you know, a pastor to pay, a pay pastor, you know, in the money and everything. And during this pandemic, as a pastor, I was really worried about the saints. How are they going to live their life? They, 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 you know, they got, a lot of company closed down, and a lot of business was not doing well. And and then the the Lord spoke to me one day: If you are a real pastor, you must pray for them. You mean that every day I must go to church? The answer is yes. So every morning six o'clock, I will go to the church and pray for each every saints that are in troubles. Pray for each every saints that are sick. And this is not easy for me because I rather go there twice a week or three times a week according to my, you know, my plan. But our plan is not God plan. Our will is not God will. If you love Jesus, you must pay the price. If you love Him, you must put your faith in action. So what I can do by faith, I cannot help them. I don't have that much money to help each every past a、uh, saints in the church that out of job that that didn't have a good business. But what I can do is just pray for them and have faith in God. And knowing our Lord Jesus Christ, we open up the door for them in their business, in their life. So today, this pandemic came to this world. I know that God gave us a lesson, especially for those who love Him, like you and me, and your pastor, Pastor Jessica, and Pastor Marcel. They love you. They they know what to do. What can they do? Is just pray for you. What can they do? Encourage you. What what are they supposed to do? Give you the words of God. This is the only way that can hold us to have faith in Jesus Christ. Please understand: if you are lean upon your understanding, you are going to be a failure. God wants you to be the light of this world and the salt, you know, of this world. You must have something different because Jesus is with you. How can you? Know that you have Jesus in view, you, because you must have faith in Him. The Holy Spirit will guide you and lead you. So please understand, my brother and sister, don't give up. For the Lord loves you. Put your faith in Him. For our God is the Almighty God. He is able to open up the door, which we can see that nobody and that is impossible for the door will be open. He is going to. Lead you and guide you, and and bring you and help you to walk through the valley, because he loves you. He loves you more than any anyone else loves you. More than your wife loves you. More than your husband loves you. Maybe your husband and your wife call you honey or baby or whatsoever. But Jesus call you precious. So whatever you are facing right now, please trust me. If you have faith in God, and understand, understand His will. And one thing, live and trust in Him. The word trust is very important. If you have faith and you say, Pastor, I have faith. I understand what is faith, but you never trust God. You are not going to receive His blessing. The Bible says, through faith we understand that the world was framed by the words of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do not appear. So today, let us together. Trust the Lord, and knowing that He is the one that created the whole world, and all our problems, all this pandemic, will not be forever. It will be over in the name of Jesus. So let us trust the Lord. Please do not let the world confuse you. Australia is a great country. It's such a blessing country, and we have two hundred, you know,、uh, positive and the whole city locked down. In Indonesia, ten thousand a day. In Jakarta alone. I think one、uh, thousand over people die, and then I just want to let you know that you we are so blessed living in Australia. God protect us and God love us. Please remember, Jesus way passes all our understanding. Trust in in, in Him. Our formula sometimes if we pray and fast, Lord bless me. Sometimes it is not that way. We must have faith and endure forever. Endure to see how God bless you and open up the door. So I just want to let you know, our God is not a sleeping God. Our God 
is a living God. You and me must again give God a room in our heart, a room in our life, a room in our family. Let Him to be God. If you are having a problem with your job or your business, scale down. Lower down your living standard. Be humble and trust God. He is the good God. He will never, never forsake you. He knows everything from A to Z about your life. Please don't throw away the towel and remember, remember, He will never let you down. You might go into the valley or whatsoever, but Jesus will lead you. He will pick you up and say, son and daughter, I'm with you. Sometimes, a lot of people say that. Why you trust God? I say that I better trust God. Is that risky to trust Him? Because you can't see Him. It is much more risky not to trust Him. Today, the Bible say in Prophets chapter 3 and verse 5, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. You can see that this pandemic came in Indonesia. I saw a video, one of the multi-millionaire. He has a house in the United States. He has an apartment in, in, in Singapore. He has a mansion in Indonesia. Do you know what happened? He died because of COVID. How sad it is in the ICU room, right? And the, 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 the nurse uh, 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 took the video and looked the minute that the father passed away. Everybody outside the, the, the emergency room crying and crying. And the money... His money cannot save him. So today, let us trust in him and know that our life is in, is, is in his hand. So lean, upon, lean not on your understanding, but in, lean upon his words. So may the Lord bless you and let us remember, Jesus loves you. He loves you. He loves you and he died for you on that cross. Why did he love you? You say that, Pastor, if he loved me, why I, I, I have our job? If he loved me, why don't he bless my business? Jesus loved you. He said that he gave his only begotten son, right? He doesn't say that he gave his, his, you a perfect business, a perfect family. But he said that he loved you and he gave his life. To die on the cross for you and me. He died for you and me that you become a new, a new creature. He died for you, then you will be justified. He died for you, you will be redeemed. He died for you because He loved you. He died for you, He wants to give you eternal life. This is what our Lord is. May the Lord bless you and remember. Today, you remember. Jesus loves you. For if you are brokenhearted, He did not stop loving you. When you are sick, He did not stop loving you. When you are out of job, He knows everything. He is, he's going to open up a new door for you. When your business is not doing well, remember, He is going to open up a new idea and give you a new business. I don't know what He's going to do, but when you have faith in Him and tr trust in Him and understand His will in your life, then you are going to see a miracles happen in your life. The cross still remains. His loving kindness never change and he died for you and me today I just want to conclude what the, the Bible say you know what should we do right this thing I, I have spoken unto you that in me you might have peace in the world you shall have tribulation but be of good be of good cheer I have overcome the world meaning that come on come unto me you're going to have peace and in this world you're going to have a tribulation in closing I just want to encourage you uh what is this uh, our author say? Sometimes you are not satisfied. You are not satisfied with your life. While many people in this world are dreaming of living your life. A child on a farm see a plane fly overhead and dream of flying. Say the pilot. While the pilot on the plane see the farmhouse and dreams of returning home because he missed his family. That is life. Enjoy your life and trust the Lord. If, if wealth is the secret to happiness, then the rich should be dancing on the street. But only poor kids do that. There's none, you know, of the happiness, right? Because of the wealthy people, they are happy. No. If power and social security, then VIP should walk unguided. There are so many bodyguards. They are afraid. 
but those who live simply sleep soundly. If beauty and fame bring ideal relationship, then celebrity should have the best marriages. You see how many, how many celebrity divorce? A ton. Live simply, be happy, walk humbly, and love generally. Why me? The answer is because Lord God love you, He's going to use me. If you have faith in Him, understand and trust in Him. Three things. You are going to see your life be changed. Let us pray. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for your words. Thank you for encouraging us. Lord, in this time of pandemic, we must trust in you and love you. We must have our faith in you and knowing that you are in control of our life. You are in control of the movement church, of our city of uh, Sydney, and also of this country, our beloved country, Australia. You are going to help Australia and bless, bless Australia. We are going to be a winner, not a whiner. We're going to overcome this pandemic. In the precious name of Jesus, may you bless our government, our leaders, Lord, and our doctors and nurses that work so hard, Lord, in front line. Be with them, protect them. In the precious name of Jesus, we surrender Pastor Jessica and Pastor Marcel in your hand and all the leaders in your hand. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Hallelujah. Amen. Wow, who is blessed by the Word of God today? What a blessing and such a powerful testimony. It shows that God is always faithful in our, in our life. When there is no way, God makes way. So I want to encourage you throughout this season, no matter how hard and how confusing it seems, trust that God is still working all things for good in your life. Amen. Can we believe that together? Now, before we go, we cannot close this service, obviously, without extending this powerful invitation into your life maybe maybe for some of you this is your first time tuning in uh, into an online church or something like this first time actually listening to the word of god can i tell you that it is not a coincidence god wants you to be here maybe some of you today you listen to that preaching and you feel like i need a touch of god i need the hands of intervention of god in my life you know what god is actually calling you my friend he's calling you to draw and he's calling you to open up your hearts to in, to invite him into your life so in just a moment i want to lead you in a very very simple prayer it's, it's probably very simple but this prayer is one powerful prayer because as you pray this you're actually inviting jesus to come into your life as a personal savior you ready why don't you pray together with me and repeat after me All right jesus i confess that i need you lord thank you for dying on the cross and for giving all my sins Today, God, I accept your invitation. Today, I invite you to come into my life. Be my personal Lord and Savior. From today onwards, God, lead me, guide me to live according to your ways. I receive your grace. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Wow, church, if you have just prayed that prayer for the first time in your life, I want to congratulate you all. If you just have just prayed that prayer again, you are recommitting your life again back to Jesus. I want to congratulate you. That is the best decision ever you were ever made. Maybe some of you are asking, what just happened? What just happened is you just invited the most powerful force of the universe named Jesus Christ to come into your life. And from now on, you don't have to walk alone. You don't have to do life alone because there's Jesus that lives inside of of you so what's next from here i want to encourage you be planted in a strong church wherever you are if you are around the area in sydney and melbourne wherever you are the movement church is ready to welcome you to our family we would like to know more about you to get to know more of you and to guide you on your next journey so right now on your screen there's a qr code for you to be able to uh, to actually scan and for you to actually fill in your details i want to show you that one of our leaders will get in touch with you and we want to guide you we want to bring you together in this journey in your walk with god amen we love you church we hope you have a blessed sunday i want to tell you that i miss all of you so yes god bless you we love you all Wow, so good. We hope that you're blessed with that message just like we were. In just a moment, we will have discussion questions up on the screen. As you go to your connect groups, we encourage all of you to be open with one another as this is where breakthroughs happen. If you don't already have a connect group to discuss with, 
Scan the QR code and one of your, our Connect Group pastors will be in contact with you. It doesn't matter where you are in the world, we want to connect with you and get to know you. Again, don't forget to follow us on social media so that you don't miss out on any exciting news we might have throughout the week. That's all for now. Have a great Sunday. And see you all again next week.